photo electron spectroscopy. This is actually one of my favorite ones because it's really, really easy. Okay, this is how it works. I'm not going to go over all that. Okay, I want you just, you can read that on your own time. Here's what I want you to know. A PES diagram, a photo photo electron spectroscopy diagram, basically is showing you the electron configuration in form of a graph. Okay, so when you see a PES diagram, just know that that is the electron configuration just written in a different way. So what you're looking at when you look at a PES diagram is you're looking at the peaks. Each peak represents a subshell. Remember 1S, 2S, 2P, 3S, those are all different subshells, okay? The first peak, typically, if they're starting with the nucleus going out, the first peak is usually the 1S peak, but they might say starting at the fifth shell, so the, fifth, the first shell might be the 5S peak. So, but if they don't, if they say, eh, here's a PES diagram, then the first peak is the 1S peak, and then the 2S peak, and then the 3, or the 2P peak. So it just goes 1S2, 2S2, 2P6. Typically, the height of each peak represents the number of electrons. So the height represents the number of electrons in that subshell. We'll see an example where there's been one time on the AP test where they've said, nah, we're going to do it a little bit differently. Okay, the higher the peak, the more electrons are on that particular subshell. Okay, a 4P subshell that's completely filled or completely full would be taller than a 4S subshell because a 4P subshell can hold six electrons, a 4S can only hold two. And then again, the farther the peak is to the left, the greater what's called the binding energy. Okay, so for example, carbon's first peak would be farther to the left than boron's first peak because carbon has more protons, more protons, more attraction. So the greater nuclear charge uh, causes a greater attraction to those 1s electrons. Okay, actually, let's actually just look at what, what one of these looks like. Okay, example one. Photoelectron spe spectroscopy data for the 1s sublevel, remember sublevel is the same thing as a subshell, of xenon and the 1s sublevel of krypton are represented below. In terms of Coulomb's law and atomic structure, explain why the peak for Krypton is positioned so far to the right of the peak for Xenon. Okay, so a couple things first of all. These are, this is a typical PES diagram. So on the left-hand side, you can see, usually it says relative number of electrons. And then on the bottom is the binding energy. That's how attracted the electrons are to the nucleus. And remember how attracted they are, they are depends on Coulomb's law on the on the strength the strength of the attractive force depends on the charges which this is really how many protons there are and then the distance so remember 1s is much closer than 2s 2s is closer than 2p etc so of course the very first peak the greatest binding energy notice this graph goes backwards notice it goes 3500 then 3000 so the numbers are getting smaller which is not a typical graph, I understand, but in terms of a PES diagram, that's how you're gonna see it, because which ones are gonna have the greatest binding energy, of course, are the 1S electrons, okay? Now, if we were gonna keep going, then you would have another peak that would be the 2S electrons. Now, notice that that goes up two lines. Each line represents an electron. So if we were going to represent the 2p subshell or sublevel, then the next one would have to be up quite a bit higher. One, two, three, four, five, six, let's say. It'd have to come all the way up to here and then all the way back down, and that would be the 2p. So the farther away you get, the weaker that binding energy gets, and so those numbers are getting smaller. And the more electrons that are in each subshell, the taller that peak is going to be. Okay, so in this case... The question is, why is basically why is that the sublevel of xenon? Um, explain why the peak of krypton is positioned so far to the right of xenon. So, in terms of that, we have to look at the periodic table. We have to look at that and go, okay, where's xenon and where is krypton on the periodic table? So, krypton is number 36, so that means it has 36 protons. And xenon is number 54, and so it has 54 
uh, protons and, and 54 electrons. Now, we're not worried about most of the electrons. We're only worried about the 1s electrons. So, of course, xenon and krypton both have 1s2 electrons. But the question ends up being, why is xenon's peak so... why Basically, why is the binding energy so much greater on xenon than it is on krypton? Simply because, based on Coulomb's law, the greater the charges, the greater the force of attraction. So since xenon has more protons, and again, make sure if they say in terms of Coulomb's law and atomic structure, you have to talk about both of those or they will not give you credit for it. This is from a real AP test. Okay, so you're going to say because according to Coulomb's law, the greater the charge, the greater the force of attraction. And since xenon has more protons, now I just mentioned the, the atomic structure, the binding energy would be greater in xenon than it would be in krypton. Okay, so this is kind of the, 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 the perfect answer. They say the 1s electrons in krypton are less attractive to the nucleus than xenon because krypton has less protons. Notice I said that differently. I said uh, xenons are more attractive because it has more protons. Obviously, either answer is fine. And according to Coulomb's law, notice that they talk about, again, electrons, nucleus, protons. There's the atomic structure part. Atomic structure. And then down here, Coulomb's law. Every time you answer a question, after you get done answering that question, come back up to the question and just make sure. Did I talk about the things that it tells me to talk about in my answer? So many times... Students have great answers, but they don't talk about it in terms of what they want you to talk about it in, and so they don't get credit for it. So the attractive force is weaker when the magnitude of the charges of the particles is smaller. And I said it different. I said there's more attractive force because there's more protons in the nucleus, and that's a stronger attractive force. Obviously, either of them are fine. Okay, this is the one time where, notice on the left-hand side here, yes, the binding energy still goes down, but here they put intensity. And nobody still to this day knows exactly why they did this on the AP test, but every year it's on there. Multiple choice, free response, whatever. It, it will be on there, okay? So this one year they said, man, we're not really sure what, what we're doing here. So, but the, the key is the height of the peaks really don't matter because it's not the relative number of electrons, it's the intensity, again, whatever that means. But the key is notice that one of the peaks is down in the 68-ish range, somewhere around here, and then one is in the 28, 29-ish range, okay? If one's carbon and one's fluorine, and carbon has six protons, and fluorine has nine protons, okay? And again, these are just the 1s electrons, which electrons are going to be more attracted to the nucleus? Absolutely fluorine. Okay, because more protons, more attraction. According to Coulomb's law, the greater the magnitude of the charges, the stronger that force of attraction. So therefore, peak X has to be fluorine and peak Y would have to be carbon. Okay, so the question is, uh, um, which of the following correctly identifies the one speak for fluorine? So we said that fluorine was peak X, so we know that C and D are automatically out. Okay, and then Y, because again, more protons, which means a greater nuclear charge, B is the correct response. Okay, here's another one here. N2 reacts with a pure metal X to form the compound X3N. Which of the following complete photoelectrospectra could be that of metal X? Justify your choice. So first of all, X3N, we know that it has to, if, if nitrogen has a minus three charge, and so this is going back to unit zero. This question is not specifically about unit zero, but the knowledge of how to form compounds, because if this is a metal, X, what charge does it have to have in order to form that compound X3N? Well, that three comes down here, which notice in the formula, there is no number, which means this charge up here is a plus one. Okay, and that what that tells you is it tells you that that X has one valence electron. Okay, so it could be 1s2, 2s1. It could be just 1s1. It could be 1s2, 2s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. But see how to have one valence electron, it's got to end 
and something like that. So now I'm looking for a PES diagram that ends in something S1. It can be 1S1, 2S1, 3S1, but it can only have that one valence electron. Okay, so right away in the first one, this looks like this is 1S2, 2S1. Notice it only goes up to the first line. So to me, that's 1S2, 2S1. I think that's the right answer. I'm not sure 100%, so I'm gonna check the other ones. This looks like 1S2, 2S2, 2P, 3, 4, 5, 2P, 6, 3S. Again, same height as the other one, so that's 3S2. Two, okay, nope, that can't be it. That has two valence electrons. Okay, spectrum three is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p, and see how it only goes up to the one there? That's 3p1. How many valence electrons does spectrum three have? Okay, you've got the s's and the p's in that third shell. This one has three valence electrons okay so which is the is the is the correct pes diagram of metal x absolutely you would say spectrum one okay and in, then you would just explain it okay because that pes diagram that pes diagram shows an electron configuration of 1s2 2s1 and so to form X3N, X would have to have a charge of plus one. So it only has one valence electron. Okay. All right, example four. Draw a sample PES diagram for a calcium two plus ion. So the first thing we want to do is we want to figure out how many electrons calcium 2 plus has. So calcium's number 20. So if it loses two electrons, it now only has 18. So it's 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. So if we're going to draw a sample one, 1s2 would look something like this. Again, 1, 2. And then the next one, 2s, the binding energy is gonna be a little bit lower, so 2s, and then three, four, five, six. And so 2p is gonna look like this. Again, it doesn't have to be pretty, it just has to be right. So the s is, a, these are both in the second shell, keep those two close together. And then the third, third shells, those three s, notice I left a little bit of space there. So that would be the three s, and then the three p again would be like that. Okay, again, I know, very, very ugly, but 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. Okay, now part B. Would the peaks on an argon PES diagram, so the same diagram here, so you're going to put it on here. Would those peaks, would all of those peaks be more to the left, more to the right, or in the same spot as calcium 2+. plus? So if you look at the periodic table, notice that argon also has 18 electrons, which means its diagram is gonna look exactly the same as that one, but it has less protons, okay? Calcium has 20 protons and argon only has 18 protons. So that means that the attraction to the nucleus is slightly weaker in argon than it is in calcium two plus, even though they're isoelectronic, even though they both have the same number of electrons, argon has 18 electrons and 18 protons, whereas calcium two plus has the 18 electrons, but it has 20 protons. Okay, so the binding energy is gonna be a little bit weaker in argon than it is in calcium two plus. So would that make it the, those peaks more to the left, more to the right, or in the same spot? Well, binding energy, remember, goes down as you go this way. They start with the big numbers, let's say 600, and down here, zero. Okay, so if the binding energy is going to be weaker in argon because it has less protons, then all of those peaks are going to be a little bit shifted to the right. Okay, so you're going to say more to the right 
because argon has fewer protons, or you could say a lower nuclear charge. You want to try to sound fancy. Okay, and so the binding energy is therefore weaker in argon. Okay. All right, example five. Let's see, is that the last? That's the last one, isn't it? Yes, that's the last one. Okay. Whoa. Got a little crazy there. Whoa, slow down there. All right, example five says in a PES experiment, photons with a wavelength of 130 nanometers cause the ejection of 6s electrons from gold. But photons with a wavelength of 200 nanometers don't. So we're talking about wavelength here. And we know that based on this, that the greater the wavelength, the smaller the frequency. Okay, and the smaller the frequency, and then we go to the other equation, the smaller the frequency, the smaller the energy per photon. Okay. So a student claims, so with a wavelength of 130, the, the 6s electrons are uh, ejected, but with a wavelength of 200, they're not. Okay, because again, the larger wavelength means the smaller frequency. The smaller frequency means the lower energy. So a student claims this is because the photons with a wavelength of 200 nanometers are lower in energy than photons with a wavelength of 130. Do you agree or disagree with the student's claim? Justify your answer in terms of the energies of the photons, okay? So in this case, the greater the wavelength, 200 nanometers is bigger than 130. The bigger the wavelength, the lower the frequency. The lower the frequency, the lower the energy of those photons. Is that what the student says? A student claims that this is because the photons with wavelength of 200 nanometers are lower in energy than photons with a wavelength of 130. So the smaller wavelength means bigger frequency, bigger frequency, more energy. So do you agree or disagree with the student's claims? Absolutely, I agree. And why do I agree? Because, again, what we just said, a, the larger wavelength, the smaller the frequency, and the smaller the frequency, the smaller the energy based on those equations right there okay so notice here they're taking two different concepts they're taking your knowledge of wavelength frequency and energy and they're taking your knowledge of photoelectron spectroscopy and putting those two together okay uh, and that would be all you would have to say uh, on that question and i think that is it yep that is it for pes